WPTV Treasure Coast News starts now. Drum roll, please. Back to school around the corner for thousands of students, but we'll show you where teachers got to kick off the new year on the right foot. And with the school year nearly here, will there be enough teachers in the classrooms? The concerns for some Treasure Coast schools over a teacher shortage. Good evening. Welcome to Treasure Coast News on WPTV News Channel 5 each Saturday at 7 o'clock. Join us right here for dedicated coverage of stories and issues in and around the Treasure Coast from Stewart to Sebastian. First meteorologist Kate Wenzel with a look at the weather if you're heading out tonight. Kate. Hey John, I want to start with uh, a little smoke plume. We had a brush fire. It's now contained, but uh, near uh, the Turnpike and Orange Avenue in St. Lucie County, and there was that dust plume mainly from about two o'clock to four o'clock this afternoon. And it's not surprising we're seeing these brush fires because we're so unusually dry for this time of year. West Palm Beach more than seven inches below average since January 1st. Fort Pierce over five inches below, and Vero Beach nearly seven and a half inches below below where we typically are this time of year. So uh, to say we need the rain is a bit of an understatement at this point. Temperatures right now in the mid to upper 80s, 88 for Stewart and 86 in uh, Fort Pierce. But when you factor in the humidity, this is what it feels like. Still feels like the mid to upper 90s outside. So even if you're headed out and about this evening, it's still quite steamy out there. Now we finally have something we're talking about in the tropics. We've had a nice little break, not much activity in the past month, but now now we're tracking this disturbance moving off the coast of Africa, which does have a 30% chance of developing in the next five days. So of course, we will watch that very closely for you and continue to update you on its progress, but it's thousands of miles away from South Florida right now. And it was a mostly sunny, dry day today across Jonathan Dickinson State Park. So will we see more of the same for Sunday? I'll let you know coming up in just a little bit. Thanks, and as she just mentioned, fire crews in St. Lucie County just containing a 21 acre brush fire. There were no evacuations or hazards. This was near the Morningside community west of Fort Pierce, north of Orange Avenue, and that's where we find WPTV News Channel 5's Joel Lopez with the latest. Joel. That's right, John. Like you mentioned, we are right out front of that Morningside neighborhood, really close to where that fire broke out. So if you like it, took a look at these images a little bit earlier. There's fire crews and smoke right along Cribble Creek Road, and you can see them trying to put out that fire and that smoke that was still smoldering. Now we're told at one point this fire spanned maybe 25 acres, and like Kate mentioned, it's been unusually dry, and we're told the fire, the cause of the fire is still unknown, but it could have been anything from a downed power line, lightning, maybe even just simply a cigarette butt that somebody threw out but it came close to some pretty it came pretty close to some homes and right now it's still unclear if any homes here in Morningside had to be evacuated but what we do know is that this fire is 100% contained and right now there is no threat to the public reporting live in Fort Pierce Joel Lopez WPTV Treasure Coast News a warning from the Sebastian Police Department. Detectives say they're currently investigating a string of check washing cases within the city. That's when criminals use chemicals to erase the ink from a check, which are then generally rewritten in cash for large sums. Sebastian Police asking people to be extra cautious when you put any type of check in a mailbox. New Year on Friday in Vero Beach with the first day of school next week. The Indian River County School District hosted a pep rally. Teachers welcomed by the Vero Beach High School cheerleaders, band, and a DJ. The nearly 1,200 staff members were given multiple presentations before they broke off into groups. Students get welcomed back to class starting next Wednesday, August 10th. Friday also provided a chance for safety lessons in Port St. Lucie. The police department trained more than 30 crossing guards to help keep kids safe. Joel Lopez spoke with law enforcement and has the warning for drivers ahead of the first day of school. Uh, what's rule number one? Safety. Outside of Floresta Elementary School in Port St. Lucie. This is my spot right here, and uh, in the morning I'll be on the other side of the street. A group of 32 people put on their reflector vests and grabbed their whistles and stop signs as they were trained and certified to be this year's fleet of crossing guards. It, I mean, it's fun. You're out here with the kids. They're always great to see. Um, I can stop in the cars, make it safe for them. People like Herb Coyle is going on his 29th year as a crossing guard. I've had people I've crossed in elementary school now with kids of their own. That's crazy. <laughs> Coyle says over the years, he's seen a growth in people and cars, as well as drivers being impatient. Cars do not slow down. They do not stop. 
they call your names, and a lot of it's the parents that already dropped off kids, and they don't want to wait for other kids to be crossed. Port St. Lucie Police says they issued nearly 10,000 citations last year in or around school zones. Tickets that can run drivers up to $456. First week of school is always a bit chaotic. Um, the people who are commuting to work don't anticipate the increased traffic volume. They become a little anxious. Police say they have a full staff of crossing guards. And for the start of school, they plan to ramp up patrol to catch people speeding through school zones. Be patient. Don't get frustrated. Please stay off your phones, most especially around schools. In Port St. Lucie. Have a great day! Joel Lopez, WPTV, News Channel 5. Teacher shortages have also been a point of concern for some districts heading into the fall. The St. Lucie County School District telling us there will be a certified teacher in each classroom for the first day of school. At the beginning of July, St. Lucie Public Schools was pushing to hire 200 teachers. As of, as of uh, last Monday, there were 64 openings. The public school district now has more than 4,000 employees. The bottom line is every single classroom in St. Lucie County will have a certified teacher in front of them ready to go on the first day. So we have a plan. But, you know, we are faced with adversity and we are competing with, uh, you know, other districts for the best and brightest teachers. Dr. Prince says for the first time ever, St. Lucie Public Schools is now rated the number one district for student performance on the Treasure Coast. He says his main goal this school year for students is to focus on improving literacy. A back to school hiring push also happening in Martin County, where the school district is holding an in person job fair next week in hopes of filling dozens of open positions. That event will be held Monday, August 8th. School district looking for elementary teachers, math teachers, English teachers, and more. For more information, you can go to our website at WPTV.com. Now, here's some key dates. Parents are probably very familiar with this right now. School starts on August 9th for the Catholic Diocese of Palm Beach. All five local counties, Martin, St. Lucie, Indian River, Okeechobee, and Palm Beach County schools returning one day later on August 10th. Following two years of a global pandemic and several months of increased food prices, summer meal programs across the Treasure Coast are seeing a slight uptick in need. TC Palm's top premium story this week looks at this year's increased need for these type of programs and the locations children can get a meal. At 94 collective sites, there are slightly more local feeding locations this year than last year. Overall, Martin and St. Lucie counties each added six more sites. However, Indian River decreased by 10. Many locations are different this year, with two school districts opening more schools as feeding sites. St. Lucie opened 40 schools this year compared to 13 last year. Indian River opened 13 schools compared to one mobile cafe last year. Martin opened fewer schools with seven this year and nine last year. The Treasure Coast Food Bank says more school sites mean more children have closer access to get a meal. Although data wasn't available on how many children used the program last year, officials expect even more will be served this year because of inflation. Also this week, TC Palm highlights where you may be able to see bioluminescence this summer across the Treasure Coast. To find out where, and for more exclusive Treasure Coast content, visit tcpalm.com slash premium. I'm executive editor Adam Neal for TC Palm. As Brightline continues its northward expansion, a reminder that a lot of crossings on the Treasure Coast are closed or will close at some point soon. In Winter Beach, the railroad crossing at Old Dixie Highway and 65th Street, that's in Indian River County, that crossing closed until 7 p.m. on August 19th. Old Dixie Highway north of the crossing closes next Saturday. In Vero Beach, the 53rd Street crossing closed until August 11th. The 49th Street closing uh, crossing closing on the 19th. And in Martin County, a reminder that at uh, Colorado Avenue in Stewart will be closed until Monday, August 15th. Coming up after the break, it's nearly a decade in the making. Port St. Lucie breaking ground on a new waterfront project. What will become part of the port? And more scam alerts, why you should be leery of people soliciting donations on the street and the scam claiming they've got a warrant for your arrest. And as the sun sets on this Saturday, another hot and dry day in the book. So any changes coming for Sunday? I'll let you know coming up after the break.
It is nearly a decade in the making. Construction finally underway for a new waterfront project in Port St. Lucie. As WPTV Treasure Coast News' Todd Wilson shows us, it will feature a one-of-a-kind playground, more boardwalk connections, and a restaurant. Patricia Marol enjoys spending time with her grandson at parks around Port St. Lucie. The playgrounds are really good in town. And three, two, and throw. Woo! So, here's some good news. The city of Port St. Lucie recently broke ground in the Port District. By the time the project is done, it will have a one-of-a-kind Pioneer Park playground. I think it's a wonderful addition to the town. Um, and anything by the water is always good because it draws a lot of people. But there's more. Sitting next to the St. Lucie River, there will be a waterfront restaurant, a canoe kayak launch, and an overwater stage for concerts to upland trails. It is a very large infrastructure project. We have a lot of work to do to bring this site up to grade. We have work to do on the river as well with additional boardwalk connections and then of course the playground. Port St. Lucie Boulevard Bridge. Jennifer Davis is with the city of Port St. Lucie's this Community Redevelopment sure, Agency. She says this is all a part of the growth of Port St. Lucie a city with a population of well over 200,000 people. A lot of the development has been happening out to the west, yep. um, and, and we're very proud of that development and, and the jobs that it's bringing to the city of Port St. Lucie. Yeah. But we also know that there's a commitment to um, the eastern side and what we have to offer. Well, you see it right behind me here. The fence is up. The contractors have a green light to start on the project. It should take them just under nine months to get it done at a cost of just under $10 million. In the city of Port St. Lucie, Todd Wilson, WPTV News Channel 5. A new master plan is in store for Witham Field in Stewart, and county leaders want your input. A public open house set for August 10th to hear from the community. The meeting will focus on potential improvements to a parcel on the corner of Southeast Monterey Road and Dixie Highway. Again, that open house, August the 10th, starting at 4 o'clock at the airport's maintenance facility. If you live or work in St. Lucie County, you could have some money waiting for you. County clerk says there's more than $77,000 in unclaimed funds. Money owed ranges from 22 cents to $3,800. See if you're among those who are owed money, go to the county clerk's website. Scammers are out in full force in Martin County. You may have seen signs asking for donations to help a four-year-old battling brain cancer. Martin County Sheriff's Office is warning that it could be a scam. The Sheriff's Office says the group is pulling at drivers' heartstrings, going so far as to make hats and t-shirts. The sheriff says the family, a mom and two teen boys from Romania, is likely living in motels and traveling through communities telling the same story to get your cash. Signs have been spotted at various intersections throughout Martin County. So this is an ongoing scam here in Martin County, and, and what these people are doing is preying on uh, the, the good intentions of honest and decent people. When confronted by deputies, the sheriff says they confess they're pocketing the cash, making about 600 bucks a week. But there's no law in Martin County that stops people from voluntarily giving away their money. A phone scam also in Martin County. The sheriff's office says be careful if someone's calling, claiming to be Sergeant James and saying you've got a warrant for your arrest if you don't pay. Now there is a Sergeant James, but the sheriff's office says he's not coming to get you. They're telling people to just hang up the phone. All right, time to take a look now at our forecast. And Kate, it was a beautiful day today. Hot though, but again, it's August. I, you know, I'm always curious it's as August. to when, when does the official dog days of summer? Is that August, September, or where are we with that? I think dog days is definitely August yeah. because by September we're, we're on to fall. I mean, oh. even though meteorologically speaking, we don't start fall till the third week of September. You know, once the kids go back to school, is it really summer anymore? I don't know. I didn't feel that way when I was a kid. If we we're back in school, summer was over. But in South Florida, the heat continues through much of the school year. So uh, time off from Jonathan Dickinson State Park, uh, showing mostly sunny skies right now. Vero Beach, we made it up to 91 degrees today, which is right on the money for our average of 91. The low was 75 degrees. On radar, there you can see that smoke plume uh, from earlier today the brush fire that Joel was reporting on so the good news is it is now contained but we're likely to see more brush fires break out if we don't get some more rain soon we are uh, very far beneath where we should be you can see most areas anywhere from five to seven and a half inches below normal so we need the rain and uh, the rainy season will come back as well as the tropical season and we'll add to those totals but we really need to get some rain soon temperatures right now 
88 in Okeechobee, 86 Port St. Lucie, 86 Vero Beach, and 88 degrees in Stewart. Now here's your feels like temperatures, feeling like 97 Vero Beach, 95 Wellington, 95 in Boca, winds out of the east 14, Fort Pierce, 12 mile per hour winds in Vero and in Okeechobee. Those winds out of the east at 7. Here's a look at tomorrow's temperatures through the day. If you're hoping to beat the heat, you have to get out there super early or in the evening because during the afternoon feels like temperatures bumping up to 100 degrees, mainly in the upper 90s and afternoon highs also in the upper 80s to near 90 degrees. Viper cast showing uh, pretty quiet conditions tonight and then Sunday we'll get a little more activity uh, through the area, but with that easterly flow, it will continue to push activity inland. So uh, pretty quiet after about 2 p.m. near the coastal areas. Rain chances over the next five days. Tomorrow, 40% up to 50% on Monday, and then another Saharan air layer works in. So uh, drier conditions for the second half of the work week. And we are tracking this disturbance in the tropics. It does have a 30% chance of developing in the next five days. Of course, it's still very far away from us here in South Florida, thousands of miles to our east. For tonight, passing showers, overnight lows in the upper 70s to near 80 degrees. Then tomorrow, 91 winds out of the southeast at 15. If you're taking the boat out, a little bumpy. Seas three to feet, inland waters a moderate chop. And here's your first alert, seven day forecast. Uh, we bump up those rain chances to 50% by Monday and then back down to 30% as we head into Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Rain chances increase once again by the end of the weekend. Okay, thanks. If you're a weather enthusiast and love taking weather pictures and videos, join our new WPTV First Alert Weather Spotters team. There's going to be an online training session next week, and if you'd like to participate, we've got the details on our website at WPTV.com. As kids head back to class, every parent hopes their kids are making friends and enjoying school, but reports show that one out of every five children is bullied, anything from being called names to physically being hurt. WPTV Treasure Coast News' Megan McRobert shows us a new film made in our own backyard to be shown in schools across the country. The goal is to make all schools more welcoming. Premiered on screen at the Lyric Theater in Stewart's new film created from a decades-old onstage musical aims to change the hearts of students. Speak Life and Bullying, the musical, follows the stories of the students you see in every school, from the new girl to the athletes and the theater lovers to one student bullied relentlessly. I hope it just gets to every school and people understand that they're not alone. In the Actors in the film say it shows the impact bullying has on their peers. My character really shines a light on the effects that that really does have. It's not only the face-to-face -face interactions, but the social media. Rebecca and Dan Bird live right here in Martin County and wrote the original play 21 years ago. They spent 20 years traveling with their cast of schools for onstage productions where they performed for 375,000 students in 31 states. Our new goal with the film is 1 million students in 1,000 schools this year. That's the difference. When COVID hit, performing in schools wasn't possible, so they pivoted and made the film and coursework to go with it in classrooms. During the premiere, they introduced a Martin County teen who saw the program while she was battling depression and suicidal thoughts. I myself to nine months ago when I saw the film. I'd say I'm improving. Before. The film, she said, prompted her to get help. It's that potential impact that made Martin County native Justin Simmons, now with the Denver Broncos, cover the costs of making the film through his foundation with his wife. We started our foundation with the goal of helping at-risk youth and what better cause than bullying to kind of partner with. The National Bullying Prevention Center says programs like these in schools can decrease bullying by up to 25%. The birds and their cast only hope to hear more stories of students motivated to get help or make a difference in their schools. We want kids to go yeah. with excitement, knowing that they can actually go in and with simple words and simple actions change the life of their peer. That was Megan McRoberts reporting. Martin County Middle and High Schools already plan to incorporate the film into their coursework this coming school year. And the birds say representatives John Snyder and Toby Overdorf are hoping to have the Florida Department of Education adopt the program. What's going on, my friends? Tyree Smith from ESPN 106.3. You know, transfers 
can be a really big deal in the area, especially when it's one of the top players in the nation. And that describes Vero Beach High School's football situation right now. As it's a new signal caller leading the way for the Fighting Indians, Benjamin transfer Tyler Aronson has made the move to Vero Beach. The rising junior currently has 10 college offers and recently gave a verbal commitment to SMU. A year ago, Vero Beach lost more than two games in the season for the first time since 2013. Coach Lenny Jankowski says he's looking forward to his new signal caller. Tyler got here, you know, midway through the summer, and uh, you know, again, he's he's continuing to 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 work through our offense and learn that he's extremely talented and gifted. So uh, excited about his future. He's a, a very talented player, um, just a rising junior, and and uh, just excited to work with him and and you know, watch him grow as a player. ESPN Top 63 event this year will feature the 10 best flag football players in our area and the Treasure Coast. They made sure to leave their mark this year. Names such as Lincoln Park's Layla Cornette, Jensen Beach's Lauren Duke and Bella Faraday, Martin County's Jazzy Nugent, and Centennial QB Olivia Kays are on the list. The entire Top 10 order will be revealed next Saturday night at the Top 63 event. And that's a look at sports. After the break, an animal in need of rescue, how he's now finding the perfect home thanks to some extra attention from local law enforcement. A baby raccoon getting a little TLC after it was found in someone's attic. Take a look at the photo that was posted by the Martin County Sheriff's Office this week. Sheriff's Office says it's common for baby raccoons to cover their eyes when they're scared. But the Sheriff's Office says this little guy has got nothing to worry about. He was taken to a facility where he can grow strong enough to live on his own. Sheriff's Office nicknamed him Miko after the raccoon in Disney's movie Pocahontas. Big shout out tonight to a Martin County High School student. Sophie Arak Liu has been named one of five finalists in the Google's Doodle for Google contest. Her design was for the prompt I care for myself by. Now the overall winner will take home a $30,000 scholarship. Their school gets $50,000 to upgrade their campus technology and the Doodle will be featured on Google's homepage. Good luck to her. And a last look at your weather tomorrow, similar to today. Best chance of seeing the rain will be during the morning hours. Hot and humid with a high of 91 degrees. Rain chances bump up a little bit, but by Monday to 50%. And then we are expecting another Saharan air layer moving in Tuesday through Thursday. So a 30% chance of storms back up to 50% by next Saturday with a high of 91. Okay, thanks and thank you for joining us on this Saturday evening. You can catch us every Saturday at 7 p.m. as we highlight the diversity of the Treasure Coast and feature those stories that impact you. You can always find more about what's going on around the Treasure Coast on our website, WPTV.com. Just click the Treasure Coast link. It's there at the top of the homepage. Have a great week. We'll see you next Saturday.